Hey, this is Brock Lemire's Embedded Systems Design. We're looking at the analog to digital converter on the MSP430. And in this video, we're going to look at an example program that sets up the ADC to read an analog voltage off of a, a pin on the launchpad board, uses an IRQ to perform the functionality when a conversion is complete. And then we're going to look at something new, which is to actually put the computer into low power mode uh, while the peripheral is running in the background, okay? All right, so let's take a look at our setup. Uh, we're gonna do the same setup as in the past two videos. We're gonna drive an analog voltage into, uh, into port one bit two, which is right here on the launch pad board, but that also has a, as a, another function, which it can be analog input channel two. And so we'll, we'll drive a sine wave into there that goes from zero to 3.4. Uh, we'll use the analog discovery to drive this in. Uh, you can use whatever you want if you don't have that. Hit, you will pick up the ground right here, and then what we'll do is we'll have a little logic in there that says anytime this is over three volts, go ahead and uh, light LED one, and then otherwise light LED two, okay? All right, um, and so here's a block diagram of the ADC, and so let's go through the key settings again to understand what uh, we're trying to do. So the first setting, uh, let's see, first thing is we have to set up the port, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna use the port function select registers to tell port one bit two, hey, instead of being a port, please be an analog input, and that setting is setting those bits to one one. Then we go through, we march through the four configuration register settings of the ADC, which are ADC control register zero. In this one, we set the conversion cycles to 16, and we turn on the ADC. Uh, in, in control register one, we go ahead and choose SM clock, uh, and then we use the, we change the SHP bit to say, trigger the conversion uh, off of the timer system within the ADC or, or the ADC system itself. Don't use the external signal. I wanna be in full control of when this converts. And then in control register two, we set the resolution uh, to 12 bit. <clears throat> it default is 10, is 10 bit. So we have to go in and we have to clear the least significant bit and then we have to set the most significant bit. And then finally, in the last configuration register, we need to tell the multiplexer within the uh, ADC that we're gonna route channel analog two into the ADC. <clears throat> okay, again, notable settings that we leave uh, or that we just use at a reset is first of all, the voltage reference range, the voltage range um, we digitize across ground to VCC. So that's the default setting. Uh, the prescalers will leave the dividers at one, so we get a full one megahertz clock into the ADC. Again, that's not the sample rate. It's going to take at least 16 clock cycles the way we have to set it up to actually complete the conversion. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, the format of our output is going to be unsigned. It will not be too complement. And then we're going to leave it in single conversion, single channel mode. Okay, so here's what we're going to do in this program. Uh, it's going to be the exact same program as last time, functionality and setup wise except that we will have a main loop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the conversion by setting the uh, enable conversion and start conversion bits simultaneously in the ADC control register zero. And then we're gonna go into low power mode, okay? And we're gonna go into a, a specific low power mode called LPM zero. And this is, this is actually a bit that you set in the status register. And we've never done this before. And the way that this works is M clock is disabled, but all the peripheral clocks, SM clock and A clock are enabled. They are enabled. And so what that does is it allows the CPU to basically turn off uh, and not run, but all the peripherals can still run. And so this is like one of the most common ways to use a, a microcontroller is you set up a bunch of peripherals to do these things in, in the background, and then you just go sleep. And then what happens is when they get done running, they raise a flag and say, hey, I just, uh, I'm, I'm, I need an interrupt service routine to be executed. The CPU then automatically wakes up and says, hey, uh, I can do that. <laughs> then it, it does the interrupt service routine, then it goes back to sleep. And so that's what we're gonna do in this, uh, in this video, okay? Uh, and so this is gonna be awesome. <laughs> okay, now I am going to copy the code from our last video, okay? And so I know that it's fun to type in this, but these are getting long. <laughs> so I'm going to copy this in and we'll scroll through it uh, as we go. Okay, so I just copied my last video or my last code from the uh, interrupt where we <clears throat> where we didn't go into low power mode. We basically just sat in the main loop and pulled. So let's go ahead and start a new project so we can keep this functionality separate. So call it C, ADC, sampling, uh, port 1 bit 2. I'm going to do port 1 bit 2, port 1, 2, and then low power mode. Okay. 
All right. All right. So we go finish. And here's a buddy. So go ahead and control A, delete everything in there, control V. All right. So now at this point, let's take a look at where we're at. We have, we created an ADC value uh, variable that's unsigned as a global out here. That's the first thing we did. And then let's look at the setup that we have. So <clears throat> control register zero, or excuse me, first thing we did was configure the ports. So we set port one and port one bits, port one bit zero and port six bit six to outputs so as the LEDs. Then we did the port one function select registers. We set bit two of both of those to one one, and that got me the analog function on port one bit two instead of the port. Then we turned on the IO. Okay. Now here we go through the configuration registers. We went into control register zero and we turned it to these two statements, turned it to 16 cycles for the conversion. And then we turned on the ADC. And then here we chose SM clock and we told the trigger to be off the ADC timer instead of the external signal. Then we went to ADC control two and that's where we set the resolution to 12 bit. And that took two statements because we had to clear out the default one that was in there for the, it started at zero ones. So we had to clear it out and then set uh, bit position two, or put it in a mode two. And then finally, the memory control register, uh, we went in there and told it, grab channel A2, which will go to the ADC. Okay, and then we came down here, and now we're gonna set up the interrupts. So we set up the interrupts, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this. Uh, we have the local enable, IE zero, which is in the ADC IE register. And then I, I always do this enable globals. I'm gonna nuke that thing, <clears throat> okay? Uh, and we'll come back later. So we'll be like, come back later. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, so we come down here and we got all this stuff in here. This is kind of nice. We have some stuff that's coming out. We got nuke this polling thing. And I'm gonna take this, okay? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna move it into the wild loop, okay? And now I wanna sit here and think about something. So at this moment in time, we're set up. And I do need to enable the, the global interrupts, okay, the maskable interrupts. Uh, but I'm also going to do a setting in the status register in order to put ourselves into low power mode. And so what I'm going to do is instead of doing it here, which we've always done, we've always done the global interrupts by doing that function, you know, inter enable interrupt here. I'm going to not do that here. I'm actually going to do it in the low, in the main loop. So let's think about this for a second. I'm going to come in here into an infinite loop and I am going to start the conversion. But at this moment in time, I want to go into low power mode. And, and the low power mode that I want is LPM zero. Okay, so it's a bit. Okay, I'm gonna set this bit in the status register. But I also am gonna set the GIE bit in the status register. And so I'm gonna do them at the same time. And so this is, I'm gonna show you a function that's really cool that allows you to individually do bit, bit sets and bit clears in registers. And this is underscore underscore bit set underscore status register underscore register <clears throat> and then what you do is its arguments are <clears throat> whatever the bit mass are <clears throat> pipe delimited so if i go gie and then i well you, these are like oring together lpm zero i now have set okay i just set the gie bit in the status register and i also set the lpm zero uh, mode and it's actually LPM zero bits. There's actually multiple bits in this one. And so what I'm going to do this is this enabled maskables and it also put into low power mode zero. And what that means is M clock goes off. Okay, so I started the conversion. The ADC is running in the background and I went ahead and while it was going, I enabled the global enables the maskables and then I also <clears throat> put it into low power mode turned off m clock but sm clock and a clock are still running that means everything is fine so I go underscore underscore bis underscore sr underscore register and then I do the gie bit and look at it finally turned purple meaning that hey I understand what you're doing okay so now let's do this <clears throat> let's come down and it's in low power mode in the background the adc is running and here comes my isr so I'm looking at this and it's like, okay, I read the value <clears throat> and then I do my logic. And the first thing I noticed from our prior code is that I started the next conversion. Uh, that's kind of the state we left it in. We don't need that anymore because <clears throat> the main loop is gonna continually start it. So we're gonna start conversion, start conversion, start conversion. But so everything else looks good. You're gonna read the value, you're gonna do this. Do the logic for the LEDs. 
But there's another thing that we actually need in the interrupt service routine in order for this low power mode to work. And this is the function right here I'm going to show you. <clears throat> it is, <clears throat> it's going to be called <clears throat> underscore underscore bit clear SR register on <clears throat> exit. And if you don't have this, the low power mode doesn't work. LPM zero underscore bits. Okay. And what this does is it, so underscore underscore bit SR register on exit LPM zero bits. Okay, so if you think about what this does, okay, here's kind of an explanation of it. It clears the bit specified in the mask, obviously, so we're gonna clear LPM zero. Uh, we had set it to put it into low power mode in the save status reg register of an interrupt service stream, i.e. blah, 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 it bitwise ends it with the inversion. This allows you to change the operating mode of the MSP430 on the return from an interrupt service routine, such as changing the low power mode. <clears throat> okay, so this enables us to switch back and forth between low power mode uh, in the main loop. So we get low power mode and then we are able to <laughs> exit from it and then re-enter it. Okay, so that's kind of how this has to work together. Okay, all right, so let's try it out. So I got my thing right here. I got these cool little functions on here uh, we've never used before <clears throat> and we're gonna fire this up. So I say, who does it wanna debug? Yeah, I have two of these open because I had my last one open. So it goes ahead and runs at Okay, so I got my code going here. Life is good, life is good. And I go ahead and look at the board. So I have my analog discovery. I have chant waveform one coming over into port one bit two. Uh, and then I have my ground right here. And then I've got my LEDs right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's run this dude. <clears throat> so it runs. And now I need to set up my waveform generator. So I open up, uh, let's see, I open up I'll close this to show you what it would be like if you open up waveforms for the first time. I come into wave gen, <clears throat> and here's our default. And so we're going to put amplitude 1.7, offset 1.7, and then we'll do one hertz. Okay. And so let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Okay. It's working. So it's doing the same thing. And when it gets above three volts, it turns on LED1. Otherwise, it's at LED2. And to prove to ourselves that this is running in real time, we can speed it up. Uh, we can make it small so it's always below three volts and it's working. Okay, so this is cool because we now have learned something new. We've learned the kind of the way that you actually do this. <clears throat> uh, and, and now there's a bunch of different combinations of what you could do uh, going forward. So for example, it's kind of up to you how you want to do it. So like when you look at this program, you've got a low power mode, you start the conversion going to low power mode. You could also have done the uh, start conversion in before the main loop, put it into low power mode, <clears throat> enable the global enables. And then when it wakes up, you have to do this, this function in order for that low power mode command to work. And then you could start the conversion at the end of the interrupt service routine. So you could have done that. So it's now you're at the point where you have all the tools available so you can start constructing the program for the ADC the way that you actually want to use it. Okay, awesome, nice work, you did it. As always, remember, support my channel by subscribing and see.